New studies show Iranian men are moving away from honor culture attitudes. Wow, amazing. Two studies recently published by Al Zahra University in Tehran and Ferdos, uh, Ferdosi uh, University in Mashhad showed that Iranian men, especially in the younger generations, increasingly support women's rights and oppose violence against women. The study from uh, Al Zahra University was conducted on 400 male students enrolled in the academic year of 2020 to 2022 and revealed that most participants, quote, had a negative attitude towards violence against women. The authors of the paper showed that the perceived qualities of significant others, traditional attitudes towards women, perceived rewards, and traditional marital role expectations had the most significant impact on violence towards women. In the qualitative study from Ferdosi University, several participants openly attacked, quote, the strict, strictly religious and traditional laws constraining free consent-based relationships between men and women, Iran Wire reported. Other responses ridiculed notions of traditional masculinity, such as honor and protective jealousy, calling them, quote, unquote, backwards traits. So I wanted to cover this story because on this channel and then also on Secular Jihadists, if you guys don't know Secular Jihadists, go check it out. Armin has been talking a lot about the concept of, help me with pronouncing this, but Gerat, which is... Gerat. Yeah, is yeah. kind of um, thought of as protective jealousy or or protective zeal. And there's not really a good English translation for it, but it's this idea of, um, you know, being excessively protective of women and the women being holders of men's honor and status in the eyes of the collective or in the community. Um, and this came into, you know, prominence recently. And a lot of people have been talking about it in, um, uh, Iranian circles in particular, because there has been a lot of shocking um, honor killings in Iran yesterday that received international attention. So this, these kind of attitudes about these, um, the, the conversations about these attitudes that people continue to carry, even if they've left religion, have kind of come to the forefront again. And so that's why I thought it was so interesting that these studies have came out recently that shows that younger men, I mean, granted, this is, you know, fairly small sample size, but um, are very consciously moving away from these attitudes. Yeah, the concept of Qayrat is translated to like honor in English, but that doesn't capture it. It's like a more of a religious, like it's a, I don't know, it's a very conservative um you know, it's more of a, it's basically owning women and deciding what, they, what is right for them to do and what's not right for them to do and protecting the families and your own manhood and the family's image and your own manhood by having a strong reaction towards protecting um, the modesty of the woman in your life, your sister, your wife, your daughter. Uh, and by the way, this these values changing in Iran goes against what the government is trying to do, right? Because like, I don't know, Susanna, like have seen the other videos I cover on Secular Jihadists. By the way, if you guys are interested in videos like that, uh, go subscribe to the YouTube Secular Jihadist channel. Because like over there, I covered um, ads, for example, that the government runs trying to increase the sense of Qayrat in Iranians, right? Like one picture, like just for people to understand maybe a little bit what Qayrat means. There was an ad, like this is a government paid ad on a billboard or like, a you know, in Iran uh, showing uh, a man with a woman without like proper hijab. Like she had hijab on, but she had like makeup on and the face of the man was replaced with the potato. Right. So basically <laughs> are sh sh showing that if you let your woman go out like this with makeup on and with hijab that is not completely covering your, her hair, you're basically bi -gayrat, which means without qayrat or without honor, okay? Or, and you're just as good as a potato. Like basically calling men who don't control their women, calling them potatoes you're or letting, useless. You're, you're letting her leave the house looking like a whore. You are yes. as impotent as a potato. Yeah. <laughs> I 
Okay, I'm sure I should just let you describe this. Thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> okay, what Susanna said. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's that's a government paid ad by the way okay so apparently it's not working apparently iranians are getting less and less qayrati right and actually quite recently there was like a, an iranian uh, on twitter in iran and iranian social media uh, <laughs> uh there was there was a trend there was a hashtag going around and people claiming that they are without khayrat Right. I mean, the translation comes across as like bad because it's, you're saying that you're without honor, but that's not you're not saying you're without honor. You're saying you're without Qayrat because they are, they're realizing that this concept of Qayrat is basically it's not honor. It's basically just co controlling women and the possession and of women, way, position of women. By the way, I'm not being like. I'm not trying to like portray this, uh, this uh, as if this is a man controlling. This is an idea that men spread. Okay, this is an idea that women are also compl complicit in spreading. Like when I, even among non-religious, like this is the source of this is religion, but it has it. Ha it was so common that not even non-religious people or even anti-religious people saw this as a virtue. So much so that like w you know wives and sisters and daughters or like. Um, girlfriends were proud of their significant other, for example, being Gayrati. Like, like people brag, like women who are not even religious or very liberal, they're like, oh my God, my boyfriend is so Gayrati. He wants to know where I am at all times. If I even like speak to this boy like this, he would be like so mad. He's like ready to kill. I'm like, oh my God. Like, why are you celebrating that? That's insane. Like, they are, they, you know, and men they, who are not acting like that they're challenged and shame as if they're not man enough like you let your sister go out like that are you not a man you know what i mean like this so it's such a toxic it's such a toxic i understanding and you know and and it's only recently people are like wait why are we why is this a virtue so this this idea as a virtue is being challenged and the fact that this went viral on social media in iran a lot of religious people were like um laughing at these more liberal people that are that are challenging this as a virtue they're like oh my god look at them they're admitting that they have no khairat they're swearing they're basically insulting themselves like oh my god like, the religious the conservative people were like look look how how pathetic they are they're actually saying this out loud they're saying that they have no khairat like they see that as like oh we're not saying it you're saying it so they are seeing it as such a ins as such a degenerate thing to say that you're without khairat that they can't believe that people mm. are openly on social media claiming that they're without pay rat. Yeah. So I think of an equivalent as like the slut walk. So slut has always been a, a pejorative, you know, a denigrating word, but women are reclaiming it to say, hey, yes, I'm a slut, meaning I'm liberated from these ideas of how I'm supposed to constrain my sexuality. But then other people would say, oh, look, she's calling herself a slut. You're openly calling yourself a slut. Look, and like, so is it is that kind of an equivalent? A little bit, but it's different in the sense that slut is something you want to reclaim. It is an actual insult, and you want to make it not an insult, okay? But Gayrat shouldn't even be an be Gayrat shouldn't even be an insult. You know, I mean, actually, technically, you're right. No, no, you're right. Slut shouldn't also be an slut is an insult, and it shouldn't be an insult because you get to be with whoever you want to be. That's yeah. It shouldn't be a virtue that you slept with less people. Why is that a virtue? No, actually, you're right. That's a fantastic comparison. No, you're right. Yeah, very okay. good, very good. Yeah. So I wanna I wanna give um some juicy tidbits from some of these studies. We can actually like dig into the studies a little bit more. So okay. from the study by Al Zara University, um, they were studying uh, 400 male students in public universities in uh, Mazandran province. And so they were asking them about violence against women and uh, various forms and how they feel about it. Um, the majority of young men, 72 uh, percent, saw violence against women as a negative phenomenon. 26 percent were uncertain and just 1 percent saw it as a positive. Um, the, uh, so for the young men who had a romantic partner, 62% said they hated the idea of any obscenity being directed at their partner. 
60% said, uh, or and 60% also said that they hated the idea of any physical confrontation. Um, just four, no, 0.49% said that they would consider raising a hound, hand to their spouse if they found out that they had lied to them. So less than 1%, less than half a percent. Um, and then for the study from, uh, that took place in Mashhad, um, it was titled driving forces and challenges of chastity in male students quote also appeared to show profound social changes in regard to how young men perceive themselves vis-a-vis -vis women. Um, so this was a qualitative study. So it was kind of eliciting responses from the students. Um, participating students attacked the strict religious and traditional laws constraining free consent-based relationships between men and women. Sun used the opportunity to mock the previous generation, as well as traditionally male characteristics like honor and zeal, you know, which are these imperfect um, English translations, with some going so far as to call them backward. One wrote, quote, I know these relationships are forbidden and haram but I don't care. Everyone has an opinion and I prefer these relationships for now to thinking about God and the hereafter. Um, another described the uh, obsolescence of religious beliefs among the student population saying these ideas have become outdated. I can't abstain from enjoying myself because of what was said years ago. Another said, I don't call it an illegitimate relationship. I call it experience and pleasure. These are all very liberalized responses. Yeah, amazing. This is a lot of this. I'm actually kind of surprised. That's very good. The numbers in guys like the, the, the speed at which that the, the values and, you know, people's view on religion is changing in Iran. It's it's unbelievable. Like nobody even I was the most optimistic about Iran and people thought I was being so naive with my optimism and what actually ended up happening was beyond like, I wasn't optimistic enough apparently, <laughs> right? Because the numbers are like a lot better than I even imagined. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, by the way, this means that my optimism about India, you should take that seriously. Okay. I have credibility to show that my op my optimism about things changing in Iran, like at least not the government. I'm not optimistic about that at all, but uh, when it comes to people's view have been proven to be correct. Okay. So in, in my, my views on India are also that short term, it's not going to be that good. Longer term. I'm very optimistic about the future of India. Okay. Um, there, yeah, there was one eight. thing that I thought was very interesting too. In a lot of these responses, they openly mock or throw out the idea of chastity in women altogether saying what a person has done before marriage has nothing to do with the person he or she will marry in the future. Equal rights for men and women are now accepted. Even my sister's relationships are her own business. Wow. That's good. completely it's... throwing out the ideas of gay. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And it, people are saying that now with pride that they have no gay, which is, you know, it used to be, if somebody said that 10 years ago, like nobody would be supporting that. They would be laughed at. It's a like, positive thing you... because this will lead to decreases in violence against women. Yes, exactly. All right. So hold on. Um, okay. So Drudrish is uh, saying that he he's going to become an AR patron because his financial situation is getting better. Drudrish, do not. Do not become a patron if your financial situation is just getting a little bit better. Okay. Only support us financially. If it's like, if you're very, very financially comfortable. Okay. So don't like, if you're struggling even a little bit, please don't support us financially. Okay. But thank you. I appreciate you considering it, but maybe like wait even more until you're like, you're very comfortable. Okay. Take care uh, of yourself first, please. Yes, please take care of yourself. You know, you guys liking the video is already a lot of support. Okay. So if you can't support us financially, just please just like the video. That's that really helps us out. Um, and we have Ayatollah Khamenei here saying, I am Ayatollah Khamenei and I order you to stop mocking the beautiful religion of peace. Um, you're not being very convincing. You know, you have to like work on an, If you want to be Ayatollah Khamenei, you have to like study him a little bit more because he would never say something like this. You're saying, and I invite you to Iran to eat and drink with me. It is time for you to come back to Islam and I am your new prophet. Yep. Nope. 
that's like you know you have to like understand the term the with the language that they use a lot better they would never come any it's not believable he would never say i am your new prophet he would never refer to himself as a prophet you had right? me until the claims of prophethood then it was just... yes i almost i almost believed you i almost believed you but then you called yourself a prophet and that it gave it away <laughs> you had me in the first half <laughs> <laughs> yes hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.